Yep, go for it. There we go. There we go. G'day there in the Business Brain Food Facebook group. Once again, because you're in this group, you get early access to the interviews that we're having on the Business Brain Food podcast. Really exciting today. I have got the founder of Doggy Licious. Well, he's the spokesperson. The founder's actually a dog. So <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so weird, but true. <laughs> it's so weird, but true. Even I had to ask twice. I'm like, are you yeah. sure? <laughs> yeah. We'll go into more detail about and, that. And, yeah. and just to make things even more confusing, we've got two Bens today. So you've got me as a host and Ben is, is our guest. So um, Ben, just so you know what's going to happen, I haven't hit record to record the podcast yet. When we go live into the Business Brain Food group, they get a bit of a behind the scenes look at what's <laughs> going on. So um, as you can see, Ben's in his car. He's decided to use the car because it's a nice, quiet spot. It's obviously quite chilly. He's in Melbourne, so he's got his nice Kathmandu jacket on. <laughs> Bit of a plug there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but And if you're in the group here, you are able to ask questions throughout the live. So I do monitor it on the Facebook page over here. So if you see me looking over here, Ben, during the chat, uh, like I'm not paying attention because I have got a fair bit going on. So <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, always, it's great setup. Always, li always listening here, you know, always got you in my ears. Great stuff. Um, so if you are watching this on the Business Brain Food Group Live, give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you can hear us okay. I know we have had some audio uh, challenges in the last couple of episodes. I'm hoping they've all been fixed and that you can hear us okay. So if you can just let me know, that would be lovely. Um, now, Ben, what I'm going to get you to do before we actually start the interview is I'm going to get you to do the pre-intro. Now, what the pre-intro is, you may have heard, I mean, you're a podcast yourself, um, but you may have heard this on radio shows where people uh, – they get guests to say, this is Ben White from Doggy Licious, and you're listening to. And in that little, um, before you say you're listening to, you can give yourself like a, a little 10 second elevator pitch. So you might say something like, hey, this is Ben White from Doggy Licious, Australia's, like, um, what did you give me before? Yep. Australia's first grain Later. for a human grade and hundred percent dog owned company. And you're listening to the Business Brain Food Podcast. Perfect. You reckon no you can do that for me? Well, it's... You asking a dyslexic to do that, it's probably the biggest challenge uh, of the day, to be honest. But yeah, let's go for it. Give it a go. <laughs> so I'm Ben Wyatt, founder and owner of Doggy Licious, which is the first Australian run and operated dog treat brand, which is gluten-free, grain-free, human-grade cookies to start. And you are listening to the Business Brain Podcast. All right, very close. Business Brain Food Podcast. Oh! Oh, so close. Oh, close. Let's see if we can do it again. You're listening to Ben Wyatt, the founder and owner of Doggy Licious, which is the first Australian dog run and owned business as well, which is a gluten free, grain free, human grade treat range. And you are listening to the business food brain, brain food, brain food. Fuck, I'm going to have to write this down. <laughs> just, yeah. just say this for me and we'll edit it in. And you're listening to the Business Brain Food Podcast. And you're listening to the Business Brain Food Podcast. You got it, brother. <laughs> we'll, we, the, we'll use the magic of uh, cut and dice. <laughs> you know, it's so funny when people ask. It's like uh, my wedding vows. When I had to do wedding vows and the, the, the sermon was repeat after me, for a dyslexic to repeat words is one of the hardest. And it's it, it sounds so simple, but in my brain, all these words just go, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so it's great it's great i've got a memory of an elephant but when someone asks me to repeat three or four words can't do it and it, <laughs> it, it, it is well we can touch on dyslexia if you want but now let's talk business <laughs> we, we will do that soon now i can see we've got some live viewers just wanted to make sure you can hear us okay let me just get to the... repeat three or four words can't do it, and it, <laughs> it, 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 it is... yeah i can hear the audio is working fine there perfect all righty so um, I'm just going to do the intro. It takes me a couple of minutes, Ben. If you can just sit quietly, you'll know, it'll make sense when to come on because I'm going to um, do a quick intro uh, that you'll you'll know it's you. It's pretty simple. <laughs> All righty. So you ready to go? Go for it. All right. <laughs> what was that? I, uh, had my own intro there. Phone <laughs> ringing. All righty, once again, if you're watching this live in the Business Brain Food group, you are behind the scenes for an episode that we're recording for the podcast that won't come out for a couple of weeks. Uh, so if you do have any questions you want to ask throughout the podcast, please feel free to type them in the comments down below the video and I'll do my best to answer them throughout the show or ask them throughout the show without people sort of realising. But I don't mind if they realise they can get early access in the Business Brain Food group. Yep, um, It's a pretty cool way of doing things. All right, here we go. 
Well, welcome back to another episode of the Business Brain Food Podcast. This, my friends, is the podcast that is 100% devoted to taking you and your business to the next level. And the good news is it doesn't matter whether you're just brand new to this business thing, so maybe you're just scratching that entrepreneurial itch, or maybe you're like myself and you've been in business for a long, long time and you've got the scars and the wounds to prove it. No matter what, there's always something new we can do to take our business to the next level. And today is going to be absolutely no different. And in fact, today we're going to be joined by Ben Wyatt from Doggy Licious. Very, very shortly, we'll get him on the show and you'll learn a little bit more about a company that is owned by a dog. Isn't that exciting? Uh, just a reminder, this show is brought to you by MaxMyProfit.com.au. The team at MaxMyProfit will help you build the business you imagine. Now, what happens is most people, when they start a business, they imagine something that's going to be much easier, uh, make them more money, give them the time and the money to do things they love in life. Instead, they quite often find themselves chained, cha sorry, chained and shackled to something that is a little bit awkward to run, takes up a lot of time and doesn't make the money that they ever thought they were going to make. In fact, a lot of people are better off just working for somebody else. Now, if that's you, if you imagine having a business that would run much better than what yours currently is, you need to talk to the team at maxmyprofit.com.au. They'll help you with everything from marketing to sales to systemization, team building, leadership, and making sure your business is running very, very profitably. Maxmyprofit.com dot au all righty so today we are going to be chatting with ben white who has just launched doggy licious australia's first grain-free gluten-free human grade and 100 dog owned company it's owned by a dog called dobby which we'll find out a little bit more behind this very very shortly uh, he's a personal trainer turned nutritionist and turned innovations manager and now trying to build his own innovative dog treat brand welcome to the business brain food podcast Absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Hey, my absolute, it's, it's always a pleasure um, having entrepreneurial people on the show, Ben. It's great chatting to you, mate, but I'm always intrigued when I see somebody doing something a little bit out of the box. Now, before we get to Doggylicious, mm -hmm. tell, tell us a bit about, you know, the, the road that's led you to here. <laughs> it's a, a road of randomness, to be honest. Um, I think if you had a few beers with a few of my mates, they'd always go, he's always up to something and he's always doing something random that they never would guess. Um, so for me, I'm currently living in Melbourne. I've been in Melbourne now coming close to seven years and even coming over to Australia was just a spontaneous uh, bit of random kind of thought provoking idea. And that was booking a one way ticket literally in around about November um, after being in a job where I just didn't enjoy, uh, it looked amazing on the outside. As soon as you walk into the into the front reception, you go, "This is not what they uh, what they promote." Um, Wasn't what was on the flyer, right? <laughs> correct. So I was I was looking out of a window. It was raining. I was I'm from Manchester, and which is a normal day, rainy Manchester. And um, I just went, well. If I'm going to have a shit job, uh, sorry, can you swear on this podcast? Is it? You just did, so obviously you can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, if you, heard, I had this, I had this awful job, and I just went, I might as well have an awful job in Australia, and that was my mindset. And I'd split up with my girlfriend, and I just went, went home that night. It was a Friday. Went to the pub as every English bloke does, and I remember having one beer, and then just leaving that beer and just going, Nah, I'm done. Uh, went home went online and just booked a one-way flight to Australia and then realized you had to do the visa and stuff like that. This is how random. I just went, Oh, I didn't realize about this. Oh, there's so, some, uh, some paperwork we've got to do. <laughs> correct. I was like, Oh, I thought you just turned up. I thought Australia and England was the same country, to be honest. I thought we, people come and go. It so, feels um, that way sometimes. <laughs> it's true. So uh, I realized I had to do that, but all went good. And the plan was to come to Australia for a year um, and just, enjoy step out of my comfort zone explore um and before i knew it I'm, i've been here nearly seven years and i'm a permanent resident which has been one of the best things uh, i've ever done but to go back qualified personal trainer to start uh, my journey off used to um train 30 to 40 different clients a week absolutely nail them everyone kind of circuit classes one-to-one -one training sessions and people used to come back to me just going oh I've, train me harder like i want to i want to I've, I've eaten so much just can we can we just have an hour of absolute annihilation i was like yeah great this is i can do that you pay me for this but then for the other 23 hours uh, they go and eat cakes biscuits um mm. open the fridge 
have the overactive fork and I just then realized how important nutrition was and that then led me to do a degree in human nutrition I completed that degree so then I had the the fitness background the nutrition background and I've always had a passion for food um for me walking around the supermarket is actually a meditate is like meditating i absolutely for some weird reason just find it very therapeutic and that's and then i got myself into the supplement world um and then realized i was sold my soul to be honest i was teaching people to take powders instead of real food mm. and that's when i came to australia and um i found myself in um a job with coles which is one of the major uh retailers in australia and I started as a product developer in Coles for the health foods, breakfast spreads, all for the private label. And now I find myself as an innovations manager for one of the biggest food manufacturers in Australia, um, which I do full time, which has helped me then build my kind of skills up to uh, start this doggy delicious journey as well, uh, which is at the end of the day, a side hustle. Um, and both feed the full time job feeds the doggy delicious and doggy delicious actually feeds the full-time job to be honest so they uh, they work both hand in hand uh so that's that's my journey in a nutshell to be honest yeah there you go quite the journey isn't it and yeah. i mean it sounds like you're quite a spontaneous kind of a guy in some respects but also quite steady in others you know so um and it's interesting when i talk to entrepreneurs you do need to have that uh that spontaneity sometimes because some a good idea sometimes is a crazy idea to a lot of other people isn't it has anybody oh, told you you're crazy? A little bit. There's a few. There's a few things that I've done in life where people go, "Yeah, that's just stupid." But for me, I've, I'm very goal orientated, um, and not many people have whiteboards in their kitchen. We have a huge six foot by four foot whiteboard, uh, and what's great is my wife is actually on the same page. She has one side of the whiteboard. I have the other side, and we're all about setting goals, making sure we stick to kind of um, what I want to achieve from the week, the month, the year. And I think that helps with a lot of process, whether it's nutrition, whether it's your fitness goals or whether it's just, I have a uh, yearly goals as well on this board. So very much, but going back to the randomness. Yeah. Like there was one, one, uh, one stupid thing I did where I decided I'd cycle to Sweden from Manchester Um I didn't even own a bike, and this is the, this, this is the funny thing. Um, I I had I had too much holiday. I had too many uh, annual leave days, and the job that I had when I was how old was I? Twenty three. Uh, said I needed to take three weeks off. Um, I had no other choice, so I was like, "Well, what am I going to do?" And I had a girlfriend at the time living in Sweden, and uh, she'd gone back there for the summer, and I went can't be that hard to cycle to Sweden so literally within the space of a week I'd bought a bike bought some uh Lycra uh got some Vaseline and uh and just went for it and it I did <laughs> and it, yeah it, it took 16 days <laughs> wow so I just think that like uh, but it it's good good to do these things because it it definitely puts you out of your comfort zone and uh what I've realized starting with Doggylicious coming to Australia the more you can jump out of your comfort zone, um, the better, to be honest. And I just think it's such a huge growth opportunity and it, it just sets you up for all different events in life. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Now, tell me a bit about this goal setting process. I think a lot of people would be interested in knowing more about that. I, I, I know a lot of people struggle with setting goals. You've got a whiteboard in the kitchen, which is cool. Yeah. Um, so, so how, do you guys sit down on a quarterly basis, monthly basis, and <laughs> do these things, or like a little meeting around the kitchen table? What? How does this work? It's, it's, it sounds so sad, but yeah, literally, um, because my my wife is studying to be a dietitian, so she she's got her goals to say right, um, network and uh, achieve this mark and stuff like that. Whereas mine are more business related a couple of years before would have been uh, fitness related to be honest because that was the journey that I was on for me such as last year uh, and the year before I realized the power of um, reading to be honest and I, it sounds so stupid like everyone goes yeah reading books is is a great source of uh, gaining insights and knowledge 
being a dyslexic, as we mentioned before, I can't actually read. I can read, but I struggle to read because the letters bounce on the page. And it was only until someone suggested listen to books through uh, Audible. And that was a game changer in my eyes. And when I realized how, how much information I can take on from listening to a book, um, I then set myself a goal. Let's, let's read 12 books in business. Uh, let's read. And that was the first year. Then the year after that was read 12 books on investing. And I would honestly say that was a goal game changer because you, you kind of, you can learn from other people's experiences. Um, and then there's stuff like reading David Goggins, who is just an absolute nutcase. Um, most people might have heard of him. He's got a kind of a bestseller um, out there on his autobiography. And he's, he was in the Marines. He, he's just done everything. Had the pull-up world record at one stage. Uh, he ran 100 miles uh, just for fun kind of thing. Hasn't signed uh, from Manchester to Sweden. He, he's not. I think, I think he'd probably do that in a day, knowing uh, this guy's <laughs> mindset. And I think he ran a marathon on two broken legs, et cetera. So wow. he, yeah. David he had Goggins, yeah. David Goggins. And what, one part of his book that resonated well with me was uh, set a goal of not snoozing. So set your alarm, don't hit snooze. And for me, a huge game changer in my life was setting my alarm for 10 past five and just getting up, whether I liked it or not, just get up because a lot of people will hit snooze three, four times. You've wasted 30, 40 minutes. It's that slow kind of procedure. And for me, my procedure is get out of bed 10 past five. I've already got a pile of clothes next to in the bathroom, sorry, next to the bath. I throw those clothes on and take the dogs for a walk. And then that's my 30 minutes of kind of my own time. But it also sets me up for the day. Come back, have the coffee. And then no one's literally the whole neighborhood still asleep. It's only 6 a.m. And then I've got another hour, hour and a half where I can either do work on the side or go to the gym, go for a run. Uh, and that was a huge game check. Listening to him going, just stop snoozing. And going back to the goals, it was just, that was a goal for last year, this year. Uh, it's all about business, to be honest. So important, isn't it, to, uh, to read the books. So with the, with the goal setting then, so you just set some high-level goals. Do you then put an action plan down as how you're going to do that? So once you've set the goal, I mean, you mentioned before that you set a goal in the first year mm -hmm. of listening to 12 business books. Did you, yep. the 12 titles, did you make sure, how did you make sure you stayed on track with that? It yeah. was just... I oh, completely agree. And, and this is where I think people set unrealistic goals and don't talk about it or don't um, break it down into smaller goals, to be honest. So, and it goes back to having those weird conversations over dinner going, Oh, what's your goals for this year, darling? And, um, yeah. <laughs> and it, it's, it's interesting because for the book, it was all right. Well, don't set yourself a goal of reading 50 books because if you get to October and I've only done 20, I'm going to be disheartened. But mm. for me, I went, well, I get the train. Well, before COVID kicked in, it was an hour on the train to work and an hour on the train back. And a lot of people, I see people on the train, a lot of people would watch Netflix, which is completely fine. That's, that's their thing. A lot of people will play Candy Crush. For me, I went, well, I've got two hours in the day. Let's get some good headphones. So I bought some great headphones and I went, well, there's two hours of reading. So you kind of go, two hours of reading. I probably couldn't knock out a book every week, two weeks, three weeks, depending on the size of the book. I go, all right, let's, and, that, and that's where the kind of the process of goal setting uh, comes on. One, one goal this year was to do a 200 kg deadlift. And you've got to be realistic. It's like people go, Oh, I want to lose 50 kilos uh, this year. It's going just start with five, literally break that down, start some small habits. It's with everything. And I think people forget that just doing the small stuff makes such a big difference. Everyone always goes for, Oh, I want a six pack for my, uh, for my summer holiday. It's like, well, start by just eating a healthy breakfast and yeah. then see how that goes. <laughs> like just, Get a good night's sleep. Have you read Go the right. Have you read the Compound Effect by Darren Hardy? It's 
it's funny. It's on the wish list. It's on the audible oh, wish list. You would, you would love it because he talks about that, right? He talks about just the small things that yeah. compound into one big goal. Correct. Uh, so, so that's cool. But I think a lot of people would have got a lot out of that. Cause I think that, um, for a lot of people in business, they know setting goals is important. Um, uh, but they don't know how important and it's good mm. to hear from somebody who is succeeding and that you've actually got a whiteboard up in the kitchen and it is a bit of a weird conversation with your partner, but you do need your partner on the same page, don't you? Complete, completely. And it is weird having a whiteboard and people It's funny because when you get guests over, even uh, the calls online delivery person who comes into the kitchen looks at this whiteboard and he's like, are you a teacher? He's like, no, no, he's just, uh, just scribble. And like, we have to stop the daughter from getting her pens out and writing all over it. But (laughs) um, it's amazing because going to doggy licious that you, you, you look at starting a new business and you kind of go, where where do you start? Where where's where's that first step? And that probably scares so many people. Going, there's so much to do. Where do I start? And all I did was write doggy licious in the middle, and then around that was okay website, uh, set up Amazon, set up uh, barcodes, and then break everything down. And underneath that, break that down. And all I just went, just give give one tick a day. As long as I tick one thing off a day, it could be a small job, it could be a big job at least all those ticks will then start things moving and literally that compounding interest, a compounding um, theory where just keep building those little ticks. And before you know it, 12 months later, uh, the business was launched. So uh, it's a huge, huge game changer. So tell us about Doggy Lucius. When did this idea come about? Uh, four years ago. Um, so it, it's, it's been brewing, uh, brewing because of two reasons. Um financials um and the idea what what i saw when i was uh, working for um coles um there was a huge opportunity in the pet treat space but nobody was coming forward with any cool innovations it was the same suppliers doing the same stuff who thought they had a good idea but it's kind of going did you actually what was the thinking in this what was what was the process? So I knew that I wanted to tackle an an area that was growing, which is the pet industry. I wanted to do something different that I knew no one was presenting any, any different opportunities. There's a lot of businesses in the the States, like with everything, with the supplement world, with the health world, where they always do some great stuff. There's so many uh, niche businesses that come out of nowhere. And four years ago I went right what if I was to look at a dog treat space what does that look like and going for those 5 a.m walks um kind of was good to go hold on a minute I've got two dogs here has anybody asked what a dog wants all these brands are brands from a human's perspective and I just went, you know what, let's flip it on the head and create a business that's run and operated by dogs because that's what they want from a pet tree, uh, not humans deciding on their behalf. And so Dobby, before she knew it, uh, became the founder of Doggy Licious. And Dobby didn't have any choice by the side of things. <laughs> she, she didn't. She, <laughs> she became chief sensory taster. She became marketing uh, head, of, head of marketing, etc. So for me, it was going, all right, let's create a brand that's what dogs want that follows the trends that their owners are going on. So the the first range that we've released is a range of cookies. We've got five variants in these cookies. Um, the standard, which is the hip joint and coat, but it contains collagen, which most humans will be going, oh, I take collagen for my skin. But you look at collagen and go, it's probably more benefit, beneficial to take it for your joints and your ligaments and it's a great source of protein for dogs to help with joints, uh, ligaments, tendons, etc. Added in hemp as well, which is just full of nutrients. And you've got that one. We've done a probiotic one for dogs, uh, which humans, uh, they can eat the whole range, to be honest. It's all human grade um, ingredients. Again, going on that natural, uh, good for you kind of um, aspect. Uh, a calming one which contains 
uh, a new tropic, which is a new buzzword um, that's going around at the moment, which is L-thymine, which is an amino acid. So a simple protein that uh, is from green tea, but it helps calm. So humans can take it and dogs can take it in just a smaller dose. And it, it basically promotes calmness without sedation. So that range. Um, the best one that I think is the range is the rainbow cookie, which is it, it's, it's got the natural healthy base. So the seeds, uh, the peanut butter, coconut oil, which is the base. We've added just a, a couple of percent of um, dog friendly hundreds and thousands, uh, which we've called rainbow sprinkles. And the point of this, which is why it's taken so long to, to build this brand was we want to be a brand that gives back as well. And one of the things that I see in this world is there's a lot of people that go through a lot of crap and there's a lot of people that close the door from the world and have a lot of issues that they should be talking about. So mental health has been a massive kind of awareness campaign that's going on to, to kind of get people talking about their feelings and uh, domestic abuse. Like there's so much crazy stuff that happens behind doors that only dogs sometimes see because they sense mm. everything they hear everything they see everything i wanted this brand to represent an, an opportunity for people to go you know what i will support this brand because it supports other people that might not get this attention so for me the dog brand is the the priority to grow the brand to grow the the range of products to have fun uh, to bring enjoyment to dogs and owners but it's also the the side kind of the bigger impact is to try and bring a bit of like you know what I could I could call doggy licious to just have a chat if I don't know if if someone split up with their boyfriend and they're, they're crying in a room it's like you know what let's call doggy licious um, and hopefully build that so that there'll be support people there to go it might sound stupid but we don't judge. So that's, that's probably why it's taken so long to think what does a good brand look like from a health perspective, from a dog perspective and from a giving back perspective. Um, and yeah, so then the last 12 months has been putting all this into action. And one of the books that I did listen to was Barefoot Investor, which we've been following for uh, his principles for three years now. And we only get, four hundred dollars each my wife and i uh, everything else goes to childcare bills and stuff like that so every month for all i get in my bank account is four hundred dollars and instead of spending that on takeaways meals out um just random crap it's actually that's what's built the business so i've not come from a huge uh wealth of money um it's been done literally on a side hustle um from a few hundred dollars uh, that's paid for the website, paid for the graphic designer, packaging, the whole the whole thing that comes with building a business, as you'd know. Yeah, I was going to ask you that because it, it does look like, um, you know, a fair bit has gone into it, but it sounds like you've done it, you've, you've sort of done it on a tight budget. How have you gone about making sure that you're, you're able to get everything done? <laughs> it's a very good question. Beg, borrowed and steal, to be honest. Um, I knew... I knew I had to save. So the first bit was save and see how much I could do myself, um, which has been great. But then with every business, I think a lot of people forget this. You actually have to put some money behind it to get it going. Mm. And that's probably what scares a lot of people. Not only the task in hand, how big the task actually is, but also how much money you have to put through. Um even now sending samples to people, I look at it go, Oh, there's $20 gone. There's $20 gone. Yeah. But then you look at it going, well, I've, I've invested $20. That could be a bigger opportunity um, down the line that might be $2,000 of sales. So, you know what? I need to invest this. And the amount that you can save by just literally, not eating out i know it's awful because in this time a lot of uh, businesses need the support but i've been eating the same lunch and this is where sometimes you just have to bear people's opinions i've been eating the same lunch for two years 
because I go, you know what? It, it's it's nutritious. I have a tuna pasta bake every lunch, and it, your listeners are probably going to go, "What the guy? What's this guy going on about his lunch for?" Tuna pasta bake for two years, and I do that because I know it's there. And when I look at work colleagues and stuff like that who are spending eighteen, twenty dollars on a takeaway two times a week, I look at that going, "Well, I've just saved forty dollars that the average person would just blow on a thing." That could actually go to an hour or two hours work of the graphic designer plugging away at the website. So it's when you look at it like that, um, yes, it's hard. It's been on a shoestring, but it's right. What do I need to attack this month? How much do I have? And then what do I need to save for next month? And again, just try and do odd jobs where I can build that $400 uh, where possible, um, which uh, hopefully uh keeps building so it sounds like you're just very good at prioritizing things so you know you know you become very good at that even in your own life so you're prioritizing eating out or or having a tuna correct yeah correct. Okay. yeah correct it's like yeah it's, it's it sounds crazy like if mates go let's go to the pub you kind of go well do you want to just meet at someone's house because i can buy a six pack uh for twenty dollars two beers cost uh the same and no one ever just has two beers on a night out so yeah it's 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 i know it goes to the point where the last 12 months i've actually and covid actually has been a blessing in disguise because i've not had to hang out associate with anyone i've actually been able sorry um to just stay in my own kind of space and just head down and do the work to be honest which people have to realize setting something up you you've you can't watch your Netflix. You can't go out every weekend because you've you've got to send, you've got to start writing stuff down. You've got to you've got to be tweaking stuff and sending emails out. So it's 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 been good from a business perspective, to be honest. But yeah, I've heard that from a few people that are doing uh, startups or in the first few years mm. of their business, and they've gone. This has been really good for me to be able to spend some time working yeah, on the correct. business. Yeah, yeah, because definitely. A lot, a lot of the time, we don't get time to work on the business. Now you've got a young family, by the sounds of things, as well. Yeah, yeah. So humans just got a, a little girl, a three-year-old uh, girl that keeps me busy. And in uh, third, third baby language, I've got two dogs. Two dogs as well. So three kids. Yeah. <laughs> three, three kids. Yeah, two, I don't know which one. Gets, ones. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know which one we spend more money on, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's interesting, you know, when you've got a full-time job, yet you're still doing this as a side hustle. Now, when we talk about a side hustle, have you got an idea of what sort of time you have to put aside to, to build something? Um, well, going back to having that time in the morning uh, is a big difference. So you look at, I, I get to work for around about quarter past eight. I do, I, and I make sure that I do the hours, I do the work because one, I enjoy what I do. And I also am very fortunate, especially in this time where I have a job that supports me. So I go focus on that, which is let's take, for example, an eight to five. From there, um, you've got your morning time where I could probably do an hour before work. And that's sending emails out so that I can hopefully get a response for the evening. In the evening, you look at it going, I get home, I pick up my daughter from childcare, we have dinner and you probably write off till half seven, half seven in the evening is probably then when it's like, right, let's load the laptop up and plug away for a couple of hours. And the laptop probably goes down half nine, 10 o'clock. And then in bed by, I I try and get to bed as close as 10 o'clock as I can, because I think people forget the importance of sleep. You hear a lot of people in business and stuff where it's like grind 24-7, hustle 24-7. It's like, well, you're going to burn out. So um, it's it's not. And for me, a good night's sleep, not only one is is it healthy and people forget that it's needed. Um, It it helps you think. You, You wake up fresh and yes, you yes, sometimes the kid wakes up in the night, but that's just you just that's just shit that you've just got to deal with to be honest and um but for me a side hustle you should be looking at as a part-time job which is 15 to 18 hours a week and then people forget you've got the weekends as well which is two extra days but you've got it's getting that fine balance with being family orientated as well which is a huge factor for me 
um setting up a business is not just lock myself in a room and forget that you've got other uh, priorities and you've got a family have, you had, that, have you had that chat though with your family and said look i'm going to be making some sacrifices now so in the future we can have more time together is that what you're thinking or not really no for me it's bring them on the journey so uh, a couple of weeks ago when i needed to send stock to amazon and the orders came through doggylicious.com.au my daughter was in the shed with me and I, I couldn't get the uh, the printer to work. It's all these small things that you think take five minutes actually took two hours. And she uh, and my, my wife was studying for an exam on a Sunday and I was going, you know what, you could come and hang out with me while I'm, I'm building this or, and learning this. And it's, it's in my head that I need to go, this is important to me and growing something, but, there's a, a three-year-old behind me that's just as important as a business to be honest and getting that balance right and so what if your machine uh, if the printer takes three hours um or t- it could have taken 30 minutes but I was playing hula hoops and we're getting watering cans out and stuff like that while doing it so it's it's probably getting that balance um that can hopefully grow into something that she can enjoy along the way as well yeah, absolutely. Sounds good. Now, tell us a bit about, I mean, your retail experience in the past, mm-hmm. how has that helped you go down this path? Because a lot of people would, but we, you mentioned before being scared about putting money in, but yep. some, some people don't have the knowledge that you would have. So how has that helped you in, in giving you confidence? Huge. Uh, I think to me, knowing what I've known from the last six years working in retail has fast tracked my knowledge immensely where it's just from the supplier base knowing okay where can I get packaging from where can I get cartons from who can who can do graphic designs that's been hugely helpful but it's more from the cost model as well where a lot of think food brands um, I don't know about IT and software and pricing from there but I know food you've got to be realistic. The The retailer will want 40% margin. If you go for a distributor, they'll want 30% margin. So it's it's knowing your costings before you go out. And it changes. It changes from account to account. But at least you know you, you're going in. Um, oh, there we go. There we go. Um, you're, going, you're going in with the right knowledge and the right terminology where you can go to a buyer and go, this is my product. This is the benefits. This is why uh, you should have it on the shelf instead of just going. A lot of food brands do go. I've got this really good tasting uh, bar. It's yeah. like, well, just because you think it's great tasting and it, it serves you a purpose, does it serve other consumers a purpose? Is there a, is there a gap in the market that you're filling, or do you just has one of your friends come round on a Sunday afternoon? You've given them a muesli bar and. They go, oh, that's really good, Janet. You should take that big, you should take that global. And she's like, oh, okay. It's it's having that realistic idea going, there's something the, in they're it. They're working in retail, you know, that that's what they're after. So when you're going to pitch a product, you've got to think about margins. Okay, what, what does the retailer want? What does the distributor want? And are you filling a gap in the, like, is there a niche or something that you're, yeah. Correct. Is there a consumer uh, to buy it? It's, it's it's all well and good having a good idea but if no one's picking it off the shelf um it's not a good idea at the end is it it's it's not going to make you money or it's not going to make um the retailer any money either so and how about product product development i mean did you start cooking dog biscuits in your oven at home or how did this work (laughs) um a lot of the time again it goes back to on the board was yeah recipe development um what are the what's the first range that I want to go out with? The future NPD is all still on the board and a lot in my head where I need the sales to develop again. Uh, I need the volume to happen from the first range to help them build uh, the future range. But you look at it going, okay, where's where's the market going in terms of food trends? And I've mentioned it before, you've got hemp, collagen, probiotics. These are all terminology. These are all trends that are happening in the human world. We're bringing it into the dog world, and people aren't going, "Oh, this look, this is crazy. What, what's, what's this?" It's people are getting 
are customized to it and i want to be the first brand to be playing in this space um that gets accepted kind of by a, a large amount of consumers um to go yeah oh yeah collagen yeah that was good for my skin oh hold on it's good for my joints too oh it must be good um for my dog as well and one of the range is a, a protein cookie that has insect protein so it's it's going off well you've seen the trend with protein and sustainability and stuff like that you kind of go well let's uh let's do one with cricket powder uh cricket protein which is one we've done as well so yeah okay. tapping, in, tapping into what's safe for a dog but also what's trending and what are consumers looking for as well yeah okay very cool so Sounds like um, from recipe development point of view, there's a bit of work to be done and uh, t- that would take a bit of your time. Tell us, um, you know, you, you mentioned before your online store, so doggylectures.com.au, but you also sounds like you, you've, you've geared yourself up for distributors. Have, is there ever a conflict when you're developing product thinking about if I sell direct to consumers versus direct to just like through distributors? Mm-hmm. Because that's you know that's sort of competing with the distributors, isn't it? Or you don't find that's an issue? Um, a little bit of it. Not no, not so much for me. It's getting that brand out there and growing it. Um, the costings are probably the same when you add on postage by doing it online yourself. Um, for me, one of the biggest um, learnings that I'm I'm really excited about is the growth of Amazon in Australia. Um, I honestly think they're kind of a sleeping giant. Yeah, what are you uh, when... seeing happening there? Because they, they, there was this big, oh, no, Amazon's coming to Australia and all the retail started to panic and then <laughs> nothing, nothing really happened. <laughs> Correct. And, no. that, and, and that's why I find it so fascinating when there is, ah, oh, the, the world's biggest company basically at the end of the day has come to Australia. They landed, nothing happened, and everyone went, oh, is that it? Back to normal. Whereas if you look at all the stuff they're doing in the back background that no one's making any noise about the, like, especially in Melbourne, they've just opened a new distribution center in the airport that I have not read one article on. And you kind of go, hmm. okay, interesting. They've got their new uh, business model, Amazon flex where someone like myself or you, uh, and I've actually applied and registered and, you become an Uber driver for Amazon. You you go to the warehouse in Melbourne. You can do it in Sydney as well, I believe. And you turn up, you scan your phone, you go over to a locker, you take all the stock that's in the locker and you go and drop off those parcels. Um, I think there's been two articles um, written about, it, but then you kind of go, well, this is, this is perfect. If a consumer wants a product, same day delivery, this is... A perfect up the order someone goes and picks it up like a taxi and drops it off no mention of it so when i look at that for like of my full-time job where i look at innovation trends um kind of the retail space i go amazon is, is still here they're growing in australia but there's been no noise so that's where i look at doggylicious going there won't be that many Australian brands that are taking Amazon as a, um, seeing it as a, a, a retail factor to go, oh, I'll spend some time getting to know the Amazon model. Um, whereas they see it as going, oh, Amazon came and uh, are they still here? And it's like, well, I'm sure the world's largest company is not just going to just leave without uh, making any noise in the near future i just think they're just setting up to be honest uh i just i i, I honestly i I'd, I'd love to be proven wrong but i just see it as that they can afford to use amazon maybe as you know what we'll we'll give it a test burner for a couple of years and then we'll make a huge impact or we'll try this little innovation here or this who knows what their plan is but i don't think it is oh, let's build two massive warehouses and a potential other warehouse in the airport and then leave like calf landed um, last it's year. It's so not going to happen, is it? <laughs> it's, it I, I just can't see it happening. I, I, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, for me, I just think they're working on logistics. They're probably working on the right range. Um, and they're probably giving themselves, instead of everyone panicking like, everyone seems to do by going let's get this done in six months and make it a rush job 
I'd like to think someone's going, you know what, guys, let's get this right. And in 18 months, let's go for it because Europe, Australia, uh, Europe, America are making us a lot of money. We can actually afford to probably take a loss in Australia and um, that, then we'll turn a profit over because we'll go in with a bang when everyone thought we were sleeping and dead. So yeah. for me, it's a huge learning curve just getting to know the Amazon platform. But for the four weeks that I've um, been on there, um, I've had a real, really good success with it, to be honest, and enjoying my time uh, doing Amazon FBA. So it's, yeah, it's been a, it's been a great, great procedure, to be honest. Yeah, how good is that? And I think, I mean, it's important for uh, uh, companies to be looking at what innovation is going on around them, isn't it? Because mm. it's, it's, it's happening, whether you like it or not. The, one of the challenges, I think, for many people that are busy in their business is they don't, they don't look outside of their own sphere, so they don't see a lot of that. So it sounds, good that it sounds like you're taking the time out to actually look at the innovation and understand what's going on and, and working out how to take advantage of that. From a retailing point of view, I think that uh, Amazon is a very important platform. And I, and I agree with you that it's unlikely that Amazon are going to go anywhere very fast. They're certainly going to be around for a little while. So that's pretty good. Um, or I'm just mindful that we, we're, we're sort of running out of time. How do people find out more about um, Doggy Licious, mate, and get on to Dobby. You know, if they want to talk to the to the boss, to your boss. Yeah. <laughs> talk, talk to the uh, talk to the actual one that talks sense. To be honest, um, so I highly recommend that. Uh, please check out the website, and you'll get a true understanding of what the brand represents. And um, yeah, I get a the feeling there's a, more, there's a lot more than than just dog biscuits by the sounds of things. I love Correct. The, I love the fact that you stand for the whole mental health thing, and that that's. I mean, that sounds very important to you, which is awesome. Yeah, and and that's something we just want to plug and uh, build, to be honest. So doggylicious.com.au, the socials uh, at doggylicious.au, uh, both on Instagram and Facebook, which we're building. Um, and again, getting to know how how SEO works, how social digital marketing works, uh, because again, that's not my background. My background is developing great products. So learning all that and head over to Amazon, literally go on amazon.com.au and just search dog treats or doggy licious and you'll see us there. And um, you'll then get to know the Amazon platform and uh, see kind of how we've created the page and we'll just keep, keep building that page and getting more content out there uh, for everyone to listen. So if you want to buy a box of these biscuits, you can go across to Amazon and they're available there now. Definitely go go to Amazon because it's cheaper than actually going to doggylicious.com.au, which is uh, which is even better. So highly recommend it, and uh, you can then enjoy the Amazon experience too. Yeah, so good, mate. So good. Well, once again, thanks so much for sharing your journey with us, Ben. I knew it was going to be an interesting story. I didn't know it was going to be that interesting. So there, no, you I appreciate go. it. No, thank you very much. It's, <laughs> Quite a journey to get to where you are, and it sounds like you're, you're you know, you're still on the starting blocks, which is awesome. Definitely, uh, definitely. But, but you've achieved a lot, and I can see you're doing it in a really smart way. And I and I know, um, you know, I've been around businesses for a long time and business people. I I, I know your future is extremely bright, and and I and hope so. The brand of Doggy Licious is going to uh, certainly make an impact, uh, not just on dogs, but on people by the sounds of things, yeah. which is good. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. So if, if anyone wants a treat that they're out in the middle of nowhere, then and you've got these dog treats, then you can be snacking on them all day long. So yeah, yeah human, it's, uh... human, safe for humans. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely appreciate what you're doing as well, and uh, it's an absolute pleasure to come on board and be a guest with a lot of other great guests that have uh, been on the show previously. So I appreciate it. It's a pleasure, mate. Now the other thing that you've got, which we'll just give a quick plug, is you've got a podcast as well. And some of yes. them might be in retail and really be interested in your podcast. You want to give that a quick plug? Definitely. So something I set up uh, 18 months ago um, just to to get more Australian brands, voices out there. And again, doing exactly what you're doing is just having some great conversations to, to kind of create creativity and mindfulness and uh, insights. And the podcast is Retail Ready. Uh, which you can find on iTunes, Spotify. But yeah, highly, uh, highly recommend if anyone wants to know all about food brands, the retail space. Uh, we just did a great episode with the managing director of Dan Murphy's to talk about his leadership skills and what Dan Murphy's did during COVID-19. So uh, some, yeah, some great guests uh, just like yourself and uh, a lot more to come in that space. So thank you very much.
Yeah, good stuff. So that's retail ready. Highly recommend you head over and check out Ben's podcast. No matter what type of business you're in, you're going to get some value from having a listen to that. Once again, Ben, thanks for joining us today for the Business Brain Food Podcast. It's been very, very insightful. I just want to remind you that today's episode was brought to you by MaxMyProfit.com.au. The team at MaxMyProfit helped you build the business that you imagined. So if you imagined having a business that was more fun, made you more money and gave you more time to do the things you love in life, then head across to MaxMyProfit.com au to find out how the team can help you build the business you imagined. Now, all the different uh, links and books and things that we've mentioned in this episode will be found at the show notes. Head across to businessbrainfood.com.au uh, and just search for Ben Wyatt, which is W H Y A T T, or you can type in Doggy Licious. This episode will pop up in the search box, and then you can go to the show notes with all the links in there, making it really, really easy for you to be able to find all the resources that were mentioned throughout today's show, including Ben's uh, contact details, website, and the Amazon store we'll make sure we've got a link in that as well we've got a very good show note writer um, our good mate mike who's also in england (laughs) an english man uh shout out to you mike for writing our notes for us every single episode he'll make sure the links are in there for you to go and check those out Uh, now if you haven't uh, been watching this live in the business brain food group which i know a lot of you are right now thank you for joining us live if you're listening to the recorded version of this on uh, you know favorite podcast play we do stream these live as we record them into the business brain food group on facebook it's a private group with over a thousand entrepreneurs in there having a good old jolly time talking things business and getting early access to content like this and you are missing out so please head across to the facebook uh, app on your phone and search for business brain food join the group come in and join the conversation all righty well that's it been it from me this week uh, i've been ben Futro. you've been absolutely fantastic for listening until the very end of the podcast and until next week have a very profitable day Good stuff, Ben. Thank you, mate. Beautiful. Still live streaming. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Let's see a few people in there enjoying it. Hey, Jeffrey, you enjoyed it. That's good. Glad you stumbled across this live. Excellent. Yeah, I, I don't ever put in when I'm going to go live. Yeah, great. <laughs> just in case great it's just, I don't want to go live. It's never happened yet. <laughs> no. Well, I'm, I'm going to shout out now before uh, my phone dies. I'm on 4% battery uh, oh, well, in the car, so I'll go on a and get that charged but i just want to appreciate again appreciate your time ben and thank uh, you very much mate it's I been did, great having you on appreciate it didn't, didn't, didn't want to cut off just in case uh you were like oh he's gone <laughs> all good no, buddy no. all good well, you go and enjoy the rest of your day appreciate your time i'm going to end the live now fantastic you look after yourself thanks buddy cheers